Hey guys, welcome back for another writing video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about something that I haven't really seen talked about in the YouTube author writing, author tube community, and that is going to be epilogues. Someone left a comment on my fragile update saying, so you mentioned like the how I have fragile, where are they now, and like how that's an epilogue pretty much, and how no one really does videos on epilogues, it's always on prologues, and if I would mind doing a video on an ep on epilogues. So I obviously, I absolutely would not mind doing it. I love epilogues, and I never even thought to do a video on them until, until I am, if you were the one who put a comment, please put the comment down below, and I hope this will answer any of your questions and this, you find this video helpful, but definitely, um, I want to give you a shout out, so put your name down below. Um, Moving on, so many people do videos on prologues, and no epilogues kind of get left in the dust. So I figured I'd be the one today to, of course, the air conditioner is going to go off right when I start talking. I'm going to be the one today to, um, like, weigh in on epilogues. And I have probably my best example is Fragile. So I'm going to be talking about my view on them, ones I've used, and when I find them appropriate. And epilogues are usually not really good in my genre of horror, so that's another thing I'm going to talk about. But first, what is an epilogue? I know how I describe it. I describe it as that little nugget, little tidbit at the end of the book, but I decided you guys deserve a better definition, so I actually looked up the definition of an epilogue, and it is a section or speech at the end of a book or play that serves as a comment or conclusion to what has happened. So I think that was a lot better than my little, little nugget of a story at the end. So yeah, I hope that, yeah, that's definitely better, and I hope that will be good for you guys of what an epilogue is if you haven't already, um, or if you didn't already know. So I have, I definitely use prologues and epilogues, and um, I don't use epilogues as much, but there's something I definitely do like, and probably the best example I have is my book Fragile. Fragile, um, I feel like I've talked about this so many times, here I go again for the hundredth time, so if you feel like you've heard this so many times, I apologize. Fragile is the epilogue, is where are they now? At the end of the book, there's going to be one chapter, it just says six years later, epilogue, six years later. And it is, or is it five years later, something like that. And it is the girls, five or six years in the future, after graduation, after Jada's born, when Jada's like a kindergartner, and it's just a little, little piece into their life and each of them explaining what is their life after graduation, what has happened in this substantial amount of time since they were these broken girls, what has happened, are they still the same people, just what's going on basically. And I call it, where are they now, but it is an epilogue. And it's probably the best example of one I have and I love it. Um, it really, I don't think the book would work without it. And when I write a script, I'm usually going to change it a little bit and have like a little extra piece on the end from Jada's point of view. But like, I think that works so well because it just ties very nicely. And what I like about epilogues is that you might have like a very pretty package of a book, but it just ties it a little bit nicer and just puts that bow on the top, that perfect little perfect little um, package. Another book I do have an epilogue for is D13666. And this is kind of breaking the rules on this one because D13666 kind of ends on a cliffhanger a little bit. But then it says epilogue and it goes into like her, it goes, I'm trying to like, how do I even talk about this without spoiling it? Um, it ends with Mackenzie after, um, after they realize that they can't do anything to help her with the heart and Olivia and Liam have come to that conclusion it goes to they decide they take the heart out um spoiler they take the heart out of Mackenzie evidently like I mean you can't live without a heart so I think that you guys know what's gonna happen to Mackenzie but they take the heart out and it's supposed to go to medical waste and it ends on a cliffhanger that it gets put into donate into a, um, organ donation um, so that's how their story ends, and then it's epilogue, it is into Olivia's stepsister, or half, it's, it's a sister, it's not exactly, it's either her stepsister or her half-sister, into their, with the same doctor, talking about a transplant for her son, and it's just a little extra, like, Olivia and Liam and Mackenzie and Hannah, their chapter has ended, but it's just a little, little bit of her 
seeing into the future of what it would be going on and this heart is still out there and just to see one little thing before it wraps up and I definitely definitely love that. Another um, book, this is the only only one I have, um, the last one, is Even Blinded by Love. So I feel like I can't even, it's so hard because epilogues are at the end of the book and how do you talk about the end of the book without spoiling everything. <clears throat> oh, it's so difficult. Um, Alexis and Michael, their story doesn't actually end together. It ends... Oh, spoiler alert. I, like, what the heck. It's gonna be so long until I get Evil Wanted by Love edited. Who knows how it will even stick. So I might as well just say it. Um, Alexis and Michael get into a big powwow at the end, and it gets violent, and it's it's just bad, and it's in front of Ariana, and it ends with basically a shootout, and it, you think that they're both dead. If it, like, basically, Alexis shoots Michael, Alexis shoots herself. Very Romeo and Juliet, backwards kind of thing, but the, it kind of ends with they're both dead, they're both gone. Epilogue. And in the epilogue, it kind of reveals that last little piece of are they both dead? It which, Who survived? Did anyone survive? What happened to the baby? Who found them? What happened to them after? Is Michael back in the hospital? What happened to Alexis? Was she diagnosed with um, the disease he has? Just these like the last little bit and without that epilogue it basically would have you would have thought they both died. You wouldn't know the ending. Like I don't know, it's just, it wouldn't have worked without it. But then I'm going to give you an example, you guys, an example of a book that absolutely, positively could not have an epilogue, and that is Guilty of Love. So Guilty of Love ends on such a reveal. And my favorite thing about that book, and no, I'm not going to say what it is, because I still have betas out there, and um, so far no one has guessed the end, which I'm pretty proud of, but... It ends on a very big reveal, and it's kind of that last that last gasp moment. And I like to end the book right after that last gasp. And, um, of course, uh, with that, I ended the book on the same line. The only thing I'm guilty of is loving you. I ended it with the title because, I, as I mentioned in another video, that is kind of my like, specialty. I love doing that. But it just ended very quick, very clean you get this huge reveal, shocking moment, and and then like you have to close the book and you gotta like digest it and probably go back and read it and think, how did I miss this? If I had done an epilogue there, it kind of would have taken away from that because then you get the answer and then you're reading more. You don't know what find you don't find out what happened. You don't know what is gonna happen to Shania and Blair right after that last moment and the book ends. And that's kind of the fun of it. They could do anything. It is open for a sequel. It is open for a lot of things. Um, and I really think that if I had done that, it would have taken the mystery away. So that's what I'm going to get. Oh my God, I can't talk. That is what I was going to get into that a lot of times with horror and thriller and just those like at jaw dropping cliffhangers epilogues really don't work because you want to leave it on that moment you want to leave it on that gasp moment and to go back and explain and give like a clean epilogues are these clean endings that you give to give your reader feel good inside and if you're writing a story that you want to have this like gripping ending explaining it after is really going to hurt yourself in the end um I wish, I love epilogues, I wish I could do them with all books, but unfortunately they just don't work a lot of the time. Fragile is like the perfect example because it's just tying everything, like I said, very nicely and putting everything, it's like the story of the family, where are they in the future, let's tie it together. Um, my gosh, people are like, like barbecuing downstairs, sometimes it's just freaking loud. Um, I'm trying to think if I have another example. No, through baby's eyes wouldn't have worked. I don't really have that many examples of my stuff that were, but just so many things that are like, if it's like a nice story. I just think epilogues work a lot better in nice stories than they do in like horror. Because a big thing in horror, you want to end on that cliffhanger. You want to end on that, oh my god, moment. And to go back and explain it after, like I said, kind of defeats the purpose. Um, I actually have a little bit of an epilogue, and I'm not sure if I'm going to call it an epilogue or not, in It's Me Daddy, the rewrite 
the way um, I decided to end It's Me Daddy differently than I did in the original book, and I'm really excited about that. And, um, oh my gosh. Every time I say um, it's basically me trying to figure out how to talk without giving away something. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's in the original that um, Lexi's birth father takes her. I think I explained that. He takes her um, and kidnaps her, and it's up to Fletcher to get her back. And there's going to be that kind of, like, shootout action scene moment in the end. And this is just for the script. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do for the book yet. Um, that action moment of, like, who got to someone get shot, what happened to Lexi, and there's going to be, like, epilogue and that little, little bit at the end of what did happen. And I think that is going to be um, really good, and that's going to answer... Um, it's definitely going to answer the question of what happened to Lexi, who got her in the end, did Fletcher get her, um, did someone get shot, did they arrest Jameson, did they find out who killed Addison, kind of that, kind of, like, stuff. But of course in a script you don't really call it an epilogue, it's just like another scene. Um, so I really hope that answers you guys' questions. That is, ex I mean, the, I wish, I feel like I'm not really that helpful, but what I write, I don't really need them that often. And when I do get a chance to write them, I love writing them. And um, I, unfortunately, like everyone else, I tend to write prologues more. But if I never pass up an opportunity to write a good epilogue. So I really hope that helped answer your question. And I really hope that that will help you with what you're writing. You mentioned how we want to do something like Fragile, Where Are They Now? And um, I hope that it works out. And... I can do a whole other video of writing where are they now, if that would be even more helpful. But anyway, I hope that that is what you wanted, and I hope you guys have a good time writing epilogues. Alright, as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!